right. Awesome. Okay. So <laughs> we're back. I'm gonna simply reintroduce you guys real quick, and then we'll just go from there. We got Silma, Nick Malnicki. Hello. Ashton <laughs> Robertson. Woo. And Baba Nanda. Baba Nanda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm fantastic, and I think we've got our uh, technical difficulties a little um, figured out now. We can we can hear everybody. Everybody can hear us. So we're gonna we're gonna keep this going. Sorry that that was all live. And we're glad that you stuck with us because we Happy. usually don't have that many problems. That's so big moment. Um, did anybody else want to give us a description of what what the main purpose of Astroplane is? Or yeah, I think I think everybody should get a chance for that. Okay. Um, well, that way we can all be heard. So, go for it. Who do you do you want to start back first? Yeah, I think, well, I think we should all take turns again because I didn't really get to hear hear people's because everything was messing up. Understandable. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and who went first last time? Nick, were you first? Did I call yeah. you out? All right. Do you want to? Go ahead and give us another short blurb of why you think the astral plane is important to us and here for us. Yeah, is, does this sound good? Yeah, it might sound so good. Yeah, before you literally kept cutting out like aliens, and I feel like maybe they were just trying to tap in and make sure we discussed everything properly. <laughs> so for me and my experience that I've had thus far, um, the astral plane to me is equivalent to the dream world, which is equivalent to a projection of the mind. So however the mind is structured, however the person views reality is how the dreams are going to be structured, how the astral plane for them is going to be uh, structured. So originally my dreams were very chaotic and, and a lot of psychic attacks and bad things. And then when my views of the world changed, when I my the mind became more... Um, relaxed and not so judgmental, not so forceful, the dreams reflected that as well. And from there, I was able to achieve more of a calm dream state where different guides and physical friends would come and we would share experiences and messages would get delivered to me to assist uh, here more in the physical. And these messages have pointed me to kind of not so much worry about the dream world, but more to expand conscious awareness in the body, whether through meditation or exercise or various forms of uh, energy changing. So it's kind of, for me, it's just the, the dream world. Beautiful. All right, and Babananda, did you want to give us another short description again? I'm sorry to have you repeat it. We usually don't have that many technical difficulties. <laughs> I would love to. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. So what, uh, first and foremost, before answering the question, I'd like to share uh, what I see is, you know, there's uh, the astral realm and or the astral plane and the etheric plane. And what I have seen, the astral plane, is similar to what Nick has shared, a product of the mind or a product of the ego and that it is very, let's say, chaotic, uh, has a lot of discord within it. Um, and what, why has it been created? I feel that it is uh, offering us a new reflection, a new perspective and something that we can't see in our everyday reality. Um, I believe that uh, we need more reinforcement of the opportunity that exists, uh, that we're not living through our heart but living through our mind. And so, therefore, if we're not seeing this reflection and this opportunity in our current physical reality that is manifested into a uh, inner plane of consciousness which can be experienced you know through meditation or through dream reality and it comes through and you know uh, basically this uh, discordant you know vibration with kind of weird scenes attacks uh, you know kind of things that just may be uncomfortable and it's showing us where there's opportunity that we're in balance you know, uh, within some part of our being, and that there is something to work out and to work, you know, to basically integrate. And so having the actual plane in creation is allowing more awareness that, hey, this is not a reality we want to exist in. How do we shift that? 
And so those of us that are exploring it in the many different facets then can share that and say, well, okay, uh, you know, to our own you know, trials and tribulations, we should move back into the heart and see that the astral plane is no longer the current reality for us or a, even a, uh, a, you know, a situation that we have to go through. And when we see that on the first reflection, we can then share that for the entire collective consciousness, therefore uh, moving to a new way to exist and therefore create an entirely new reality, one that is co-creative and empowering. So, in, uh, in short detail, that's uh, what I see the purpose for the astral plane. Thank you for allowing me to share. Beautiful. It sounds like you were full of knowledge, and we're excited to hear what else you have to share. So, I'm going to go ahead and move to Ashton. Do you want to give us your description of the astral plane? Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I really like what Baba Nanda had to say, uh, deciphering the difference between the astral plane and the etheric plane. We'll get more into that deeper, but I kind of just presume that most people, when they think of like outside of Earth realities, there's just the astral plane. Um, I tend to think of the astral plane as more like the fourth dimension, like this in between octaves of like where we are on Earth now and where we're headed to. Um, say a fifth dimensional, like higher vibrational, more harmony esque type reality and what I've experienced in the astral realm is negative thought form entities um, negative ET entities lots of gooey sticky like really nightmare land is um, I would say in the astral plane um, but again it's this super perfect contrast for our beings to experience these really negative things because it's like well that's definitely not what I want to experience and but it's also coming through me so it's something that creation wants you to experience so through your higher self you can kind of release those patterns by experiencing them and going into a state of non-judgment because I've experienced them and it's like oh you have to um, you know really like fight and like battle up against these entities and um, recently what I've experienced is just um, transmuting them it works uh, way way better that's awesome <laughs> I'm, I'm learning so much just listening to you guys give your introductions because part of the reason I wanted to facilitate was I felt like I learned better from hearing other people's experiences and um, explanations of it and me trying to research it myself. So I'm thankful. And Silman, it's your turn to explain um, what your view of the astral plane is. Yeah, uh, awesome. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed what everybody else had to say, and uh, I would definitely agree with Ashen when he said that. It's like the in between place to go. Um, and my early definition of astral, the astral plane, is a, a, a little bit different now after going through some research. And I found a few definitions online. One of them was talking about uh, the astral plane is based off of uh, what is going on within yourself, as in your emotions and your thoughts. And it is a place that is. Uh, created by thought and it can have the physical plane sort of holographed into it based on our experiences here on uh, on earth and and also in astral plane you're said to be able to go to different galaxies um, planets and, and whatnot and that's uh, something that I've had personal experience with and, I, and I've done that and I've gone through that and the, the definition for astral projection can be so broad. The military calls it uh, remote viewing, and that's when you can leave your body and go and see real places and real events. Um, and I, was, I just lost my train of thought, but I do have this here. And it says that the astral realm, instead of mirroring physical form, it, it symbolically 
mirrors emotional and psychic energy patterns, like uh, based on what you're thinking at the time. If you astral project, you will create that. There's very little difference from what I found in my research that astral projection and dreaming are are different. I haven't seen anything that supports the fact that they are different. However, people can consciously uh, project themselves in their astral body, um, also called the emotional body, to, to those places. And they can do that while being conscious of their physical body in that physical present, um, present moment. Um, but looking online, searching, like it's it's a very broad subject, and I I feel like I've um, I've got more questions than I've gotten answers. And there's this uh, form of philosophy called uh, theosophy. And a lot of theosophists talk about the 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 um, the astral plane. Um, there's a Sanskrit word for it, Kamaloka, I believe. <laughs> and, uh, it's it's in all these different religions. Uh, for instance, Christianity. It's also in Christianity. Um, so there is evidence to support the fact that that astral projection is real and it is tangible. Um, but to define what it is is very difficult if you have not experienced it because you you can fly and you can go to different worlds, different galaxies, different sort of dimension. And um, one of the websites that I found online talked about seven, seven different uh, dimensions of astral projection one was the lower astral, which is more physical. Uh, there's one lower astral that is non-physical, the astral plane, the higher astral, the etheric, uh, interplanetary and uh, intergalactic etheric, and the higher self integration. And based on these different levels, there's just different levels of vibration within yourself uh, to be able to travel to those places. Um, but again, if if you are searching for an answer as to what astral projection is, the best thing that you could do is to try and experience it for yourself to see if, if it is real. Um, and that is the only way I think you will find the answers that, that you may be looking for. At least that's what I got when I was doing my research. Ah, oh, well, it looks, sounds like you uh, really looked into it. And then that, like I said, it's going to be an awesome discussion. Did anyone want to add to... Um, the purpose before we break into some more open discussion. Is that, is that good with everyone, or does anyone have anything else? No. Nope. All right. Sounds like we're going to move on. Um, and now that we got, like, what everyone's personal view of the, the astral plane is, let's just kind of, you guys, if you want to feed on to what someone else says, we, we can open it up like a round table, and um, I'll try to... Um, Make sure that you are seen as heard. And the first uh, real discussion is like, how how do you think the planes like affect us here, um, in like the physical world? If you do something in the astral world, does it have an effect here? Does anyone want to open that discussion? I would say yes. Yeah, definitely, a hundred percent is affecting our world. Um, I would say it's pretty evident um, just by kind of walking around and reading the news that some of these negative entities have kind of started, well, have pretty much, I don't know if control is the best word, but really like controlled the earth plane 3D um, for a while. And it seems as, as if some of the missions of the star seed is to incarnate here now to like break that vibrational pattern so we can start getting more harmony and more awesomeness instead of uh, the gooey backwards Z <laughs> stuff. <laughs> awesome. Um, you think um, the people you said that are kind of like, I don't know, not necessarily controlling like you said, but 
they have more pull in this world. Do you think it's because they've they've mastered being able to meet up with uh, other people or um, making things happen in the astral realm so that they don't have to spend as much time doing it in the physical realm? Or does anyone have any thoughts on like how that's affecting us? Let me uh, go ahead if I can. Um, and touching on what Ash was speaking of, like, you know, how it's all interrelated and affected is, uh, you know, it's a direct reflection of our true creatorship, I see. Um, and those, you know, what I like to call catalysts of change without giving them a, a negative connotation, but simply uh, showing us a reflection of uh, opportunity. And what is being shown to us is how instantly uh, our mind can create something what we think and what we directly manifest and so therefore it manifests into a vibrational field that is not necessarily seen and then it eventually becomes into the physical which we build upon and therefore so we're you know feeding itself that's creation you know like the figure A no matter what level of consciousness or no matter how many dimensional realities they're all you know supporting one another in some level um, some just have greater precedence depending on what vibrational spectrum you find yourself in so the earth plane I see is directly affected by the astral plane that they are kind of running really side by side and that the more that we allow the ego to basically dictate our lives, it goes into that field of the astral and the astral coming back. And so therefore we have created uh, more lessons, more teachers if you will, for these what we deem negative or uh, dark forces. They're not, you know, they all come from God as well. There's no way you know, need to put outside of ourselves. They're here to show us that we're creating from a place that is not in vibrational alignment with our absolute truth. And our absolute truth being your heart-based beings, but we're creating from a limited scope, which is our mind. And so this mind is creating what is known as the astral plane. So we were not seeing that reflection through our physical reality. So therefore, it's, you know, we're taken out to the unseen reality to also see it there to say, you cannot deny this. We're going to show you on multiple levels until you find enough influence and encouragement to say, I no longer want to experience this, this source of disconnection, separation, and, you know, disharmony and discord. It just don't resonate with me any longer, and it doesn't, it's not a reality that I uh, wish to experience anymore. So, whatever needs to come through these realities is being amplified till it pushes us to the threshold of discomfort that we say, I will no longer take this, I am going to uh, find a solution making us release whatever we think reality is and saying, okay, I surrender, what is it really, okay, now we open our, our cup again and say, okay, something else needs to come in and we start seeing this is where we're getting the, uh, you know, the support from the etheric planes that are saying, ah, okay, they're ready to, to let go of control, they're ready to let go and say, maybe reality exists that something that they can't fathom yet. Let's fill their cup a little bit now that they've emptied it. And so that's what I see, this interplay between our reality and the astral plane and why it still exists and, uh, of course, the opportunity that it presents itself. It's a great, uh, uh, a great teacher. It's a great catalyst for evolution because we found, we found ourselves laggard in our own reality and so we needed this lesson and it's been uh, beautiful. It, maybe doesn't seem so beautiful when it's being experienced, but here we are in my own personal reality, I can say it's been the, the biggest catalyst to help me to move back into more of the unconditional love and heart-based consciousness because I can now love those things, those images, those vibrations that I didn't feel comfortable with before. It's an integration saying that I don't have to experience it nor do I have to react to it. I just need to love it and see that it's a vibration that's so. So that would be my perspective on that particular question. That's awesome. So pretty much you're using it, well, your higher self is using it as a tool um, to guide your physical realm and helping you release um, different aspects of your life. Is that what you were saying pretty much? Oh, yeah, absolutely. My life and everybody's life. I mean, we're sharing it. <laughs> That's awesome. I fully agree with that. Um, and I'm glad that someone else outside does because that clears it up a little bit for me. Um, Suleiman, did you have anything you wanted to add to how you think it affects us? Yeah, I do. Um, I was reading, as I was mentioning, the uh, seven, seven different uh, dimensions of the astral plane. 
basically like when people pass their body goes to the stage the in between and what they experience is what is you know in their emotional energy fields and their thought forms um, and so like in the movie with Robin Williams what dreams may come when you wake up to that existence in the astro uh, you could be in a lower part of the astro and it will seem like hell to you and this I feel is related to Christianity saying there's a hell that is what I feel like that would be and if you saw the movie What Dreams May Come you'll see that Robin Williams wife was in her own literal hell because in her mind she was suffering um, but you can with your with your emotional energy fields and, and thoughts you can create yourself a higher plane of existence on the astral plane and in there I feel like you can receive guidance from angels or spiritual guides, ascended masters and anybody who may be guiding you on your path on earth um, guardian angels and so if you if you can you can make sure that your vibration is very high your thoughts are based on love and compassion and just higher vibratory feelings and thoughts and then when you astro project you can meet these guides and you can bring that information back to you to serve as more even more motivation to to continue on your path because you know that it's for a reason and your guides will give you really good advice for, for being able to stay straight and clairvoyant in your mission. Thank you. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> um, Nick, did you want to add anything? You found quiet. I completely share the sentiments of uh, Babananda and Silo. I mean, I would explain it in other ways, but they made it so concise that there is a really, a, a, I don't feel the need to explain it any further. I, I am kind of viewing it in the exact, you know, same type of deal. You get messages from upstairs, if you will, but it, it can be tried, and that allows you to be able to find the courage to release things, and by releasing those, accepting what experiences are put out for you to experience, um, the mind is able to calm down and the heart is able to gain the next fuel and really kind of. Awesome. So it seems like. Are you gone? Sorry, you cut out. <laughs> <laughs> you still there? I'm still here. Awesome. <laughs> it seems like uh, everyone's generally on the same page is the astral realm is here for us as a tool and um, that our angels and guides and things are talking to us about it. But what about um, like gifts in the astral realm? Do you, do you guys believe certain gifts can be granted in the astral realm versus the physical or do they kind of coincide together or what's someone's view on that? Yeah, I've, I've received many gifts in the astral realm through meditations. Um, Essentially, I would go into these meditations, and there would be a spiritual guide, like, on each direction, north, east, uh, and south, and west. And every time, you would exchange gifts with the spirit guide, and I got, I got a vial of violet flame. I got a dragon key that opens any door to any dimension and closes any door. I got um, like right. Kundalini energy upgrades, um, a lightsaber, <laughs> sword, um, and like the lightsaber and sword was like to cut like etheric cords um, from entities that were attached to me or versions of myself that I was attached to that I didn't really resonate with anymore, so I was letting go. I really like what. Um, Baba Nanda was saying about how these negative entities are really aspects of ourselves and the one true being that we are. So once you can see that, 
you get into that heart space. You're like, oh, well, it's not so bad if it's just a projection of, like, the deep subconscious of our God selves, like, that total ultimate form of contrast is what I'm, like, feeling and hearing. Like, all these super negative realms are just what we need to propel us forward, really, is exactly what you're saying. And shamanism has been doing this for thousands upon thousands of years, where they go to the higher planes, pull back, whether it be medicinal information, spiritual information, emotional information, and bring it back into this physical realm to ground it, integrate it, and share with the rest of the tribe. Um, which is what really so much of us are really doing now. Um, there's visionary painters and musicians and poets, and we're really all just shamans pulling information from higher densities into our world to better everyone and accelerate the healing of the planet. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, the, that list of gifts you were, you were given. Sounds like a, a pretty awesome experience. Did anyone else receive any gifts in the astral realm? Yeah, definitely. You want to tell us about them? Yeah. Um, one actually was from my friend, Miss No, and he uh, gifted a stone and said, meditate with this, and there's, uh, some, there's something that you reconnect with, basically. So, and so, basically... Um, I had the stone and I, and I did meditate, and this is all happening, you know, within the mind's eye, but still very real. And there was this gigantic dragon that I ended up riding around just in space for a while. And and <laughs> um, there's there's many gifts you can receive while in the astral. Um, you know, guides can bestow upon you different sort of uh, energies or um, alterations or upgrades. Uh, uh, you know, we in in the physical world we can receive downloads, such as the Kundalini awakening, and and stuff like that can also happen in the in the astral. Um, so there's just an amazing amount of of things that you can bring back with you, if even if you can't like see it in the physical, it's still there. Or Nick, yeah. you guys, any gifts you received? Yeah, I would uh, like to share that I have received gifts from the etheric planes as well as the astral planes. And I would like to clarify from my own perspective and also my guidance that which comes from the astral plane is distorted. Those gifts that I have received from the astral plane that have come through have not been in full vibrational alignment to the absolute reality. Um, though they are a gift because they they taught me discernment. They taught me to show that when I use these energies, which are a, a mimicking of the etheric gifts, they actually brought distortion into my field or whoever uh, that I shared it with. And much of when we see the astral realm, as we've expressed, that it is chaotic or much of the ego aspect. And when I started to make the full connection and the distinction between the astral to the etheric was when I was able to bring more of the higher light coding, which is uh, without any distortions through it, and that being the biggest difference between the two. The one taught me that if I was existing in the mind and I was connecting to my guidance to the mind, then I was uh, pulling it from a place that was not uh, in alignment with the God Creator Source so much in the way that our truth is. When I started getting to the etheric planes, it was coming through the heart. And when it's to the heart, I could feel it. Within that, that is what our intuitive sense is in the way that it's shown that if somebody handed you or energetically passed you either an etheric gift or an astral gift, um, if you, you, you would be able to tell the distinction only through the heart. The mind could not uh, actually distinct between the two, and that is what the greatest lesson that it offers us. So uh, outside of that, what I have learned is to therefore connect uh, and pull only through the etheric, and in the etheric, I pull through 
unlimited gifts. I meditate regularly to connect to that plane and pull through many different light codes, templates, blueprints, um, and many different ways to really accelerate the vibrational field, which is allowing you to spin more. And everything is basically a light code. The light code allows you to spin a little bit faster and a little bit faster. And they've shown me them as just like Ashton explained as items so that we can identify with it. It's fun. And when we see much of our iconographic, uh, basically, realities that the different religious sects have shown us, those are the way that many of these uh, key codes, if you will, is the way that they've been presented to me, are always expressed. These gifts do a lot of times as items because that way we can relate to it and that they're very multidimensional depending on what level of consciousness you're at and how you can actually access and operate them. And then, you know, when you bring that in and anchor in these different energies, you're actually offering yourself a new experience. You're offering a greater expansion in how you explore consciousness, but then you become a greater beacon and a greater opportunity for anyone that you're connected to and the entire Earth's field in itself. So by anchoring that etheric here, because we're fully, you know, more focused to the astral, is the way I see it and where my guides have me mm -hmm. here. We're mostly focused to the astral, and the point of bringing the etheric gifts is to anchor the etheric down here, which is the new Earth, where the fifth dimensional spectrum begins. Not to get into details of where anything ends or begins, but to bring the etheric back in, where there is no more distortions, and that's the mind. The mind cannot uh, even equate the vastness of God created source I am that can only be expressed or uh, understood at any level through the heart space. And that, that's like been one of my greatest lessons through making this connection. And it was you know, through a lot of meditation that, that taught me this and connecting with both realities. And the astral, you can see, always has a lighter hue. Uh, uh, like if you were looked at a dimmer light and then a brighter light, that's how you can tell the spirit. And then what you can't see there, you can feel in your heart. And, you know, we could do the that test here. You can present anything, whether you want to check if it's in vibrational alignment, is put it in your heart space. What does love feel like in your heart? And if it doesn't if it doesn't feel anything that you want to know, is it astral or etheric, then it, it will be a different resonance uh, than what love feels like. Uh, anything astral would be. That's one of the best ways to make the distinction if one were to entertain that particular perspective and uh, you know, until you actually are able to make that connection on the inner plane of consciousness. So that's what I'd, uh, I'd like to share uh, in my own perspective, my own experience, and also in accordance with what my guides have shared. <laughs> I love that you brought your guides into it, and everyone in the chat room is just saying that how they love how you are just able to fully explain it with so much love, and you can tell your heart is in it. So. Know that everyone is excited you're with us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to start delving into etheric stuff. But. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've experienced the exact same thing with the difference between the astral and the etheric. Um, when I first started meditating, I was like, oh, I want to astrally project so bad. And then it was like, well, if you're going to go into the astral realm, why are you going there and if you're going to go there, make sure you have like like a crew of guides and protection if like you need to go there. But it just, I no longer really resonate with going into the astral. I don't, I'm, not, I'm trying to like descend my soul into my body so I can experience these like higher levels of creation like right here on earth like as I tune into these etheric planes it's like I can see them they're just like overlaid and in, in, interlapped like with the earth plane and this like the field the source field the matrix that's kind of embedded within this reality once you're like tuned into that you just get into this bliss state and it just opens you up more and more as you get those more and more light codes and you just like keep expanding through your heart and those negative entities no longer put fear into your mind because it's 
who you know it's an aspect of you, and you're the light of consciousness, so all you really have to do is, like, shine your light onto it, and, I mean, I've experienced literally, like, demons, like, in my face, and then, like, shining that light, and them, like, smiling, and, like, kind of getting confused, and being like, oh, like, I want to go home, and then, like, boop, like, things like that. Which is really out there, but um, if you ever come across negative entities, it's good to know this stuff. Definitely, I think that you explained that well. That's something I think we should touch on. Um, For sure. Is that in the astral realm, you you definitely should take a team. Um, I'm sure the guys would each like to talk a little bit about that. But real quick, um, Nick, I didn't mean to skip you. Did you have any special gifts you wanted to share with us that you received? Uh, those of you that know me. So that I'm heavily into the, the mind and the games of that kind of matrix, and I'm just utterly speechless right now. I, all of the, the, what everyone has said, I've I've felt and I've experienced, and it's all just coalescing. The mind is gone, I feel like a newborn baby experiencing everything for the very first time. Awesome. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, um, <laughs> I should have loved that you're with us tonight. <laughs> Me too. Really, it's good to have you back. Um, I think I, I had a, a slight personal question real quick, and then um, I would love for you guys to go into a little bit more about the different dark beings you can encounter. But just to clear it up, I think part of my personal um trying to figure out the astral realm is, could you guys describe what the difference between going in an astral projection and a lucid dream is? Does anyone have any views on that? Because I can't, I don't think I understand the difference. Me. Uh, through, through personal experience, I would say that astral projection, more you can visit uh, more tangible things in a dream, say dreams are very confusing. And if you look at a clock, it's melting. You look at your hands, they will start to fade away. Um, and as a projection, you can see physical things, um, actual events that are happening. Um, one of the best ways to get into an astral projection, if you want to get into it, is um, through dreams. If you can consciously know that you're lucid dreaming, you can end up... Uh, Sort of uh, going through a, a gateway, I, I suppose you could say. Um, but yeah, uh, dreams are more, uh, I don't know, maybe imagination based, or I know everything's imagination based, but um, yeah, I guess the biggest difference is uh, how loose a dream is and how weird and sort of. Hazy and I got you. It's getting kind of crazy. But Vananda, I thought I saw your hand go up. Would you? I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. Sure, sure. I'd like to make a few distinctions in how I perceive it. How you know my guides uh, always have me to see it and understand it. First, a lucid dream exists in many different realities. That it's not one specific place. That it can be happening in either the etheric or the astral, and that there's so many different scopes that it goes into, um, the difference being from lucid to, uh, in, let's let's say that, I wouldn't say just astral projection, I would say consciousness projection, where there's either astral projecting, which is moving your consciousness into the astral, or there's etheric projection, by moving your consciousness into the etheric, so I would say with actual consciousness projection, you're more aware and focused within the human vessel. When you move into the dream state, you're less aware, even though lucid, you do become aware, but it seems only temporal, and uh, it's not really like you have full control, it may just be briefly, and then you're out of it, where you don't, you know, unless you have really, you know, could be into a lucid dream for an hour, and be completely mindfully aware the whole time. With a consciousness projection, I see that as you are completely aware, you're completely focused, and you're completely tuned into the the whole experience. Whether you're projecting into the astral plane or the uh, etheric plane, you're 
aware, you're really right there, and that you actually can have, uh, you can, uh, let's say, translate it, you know what I mean, and better to understand it and then use it as a tool. You're grabbing from the lucid dream state, it becomes kind of lost when waking uh, into, you know, our waking consciousness, then it becomes kind of jumbled and we're not certain exactly where it was or what took place. So that would be the distinction I would make between them and, you know, uh, you know especially from my own experiences and also with my guidance. So, yeah. That's, yeah. that's very, very nice. And like I said, you, you just have a flow with how you were able to describe it. Did anyone else want to touch on that before we moved on? Um, so the difference between astral projecting and lucid dreaming, right? Right, that's what I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> okay, so I guess I think of dreaming as almost like an astral projection in a sense. Um, I like the term consciousness projection. I love that. Um, just to help decipher between like what is the astral realm and what is the spiritual realms, like what is all, what are the dimensions and I think we're kind of defining the Asher realm as like a specific place, not quite the entirety of what exists outside of your body or this universe. Um, lucid dreaming, like you said, can really involve multiple realities. You can have like a hundred different realities in one. Um, or you could have a lucid dream that's a very real place. I've had lucid dreams where I was pretty much told like psychically through it was just like me and a bunch of little kids and all the little kids were saying like this is where we go when our in our dream time and like this is really just like a higher reality like waiting for us it's not so much like a dream world where it's like I, I see dreams and like sometimes it'll be like a simulation like in the matrix where they like go to the simulated programs and they like test certain experiences say you like have something horrible happen to you in a dream but then you don't experience that on Earth because you like already simulated it out. You already like kind of worked that karma out in your dream time. Um, but the conscious astral projection is really you're kind of going somewhere specific. Generally, either whether it be like the blueprint reality of the universe where you'll see all the grids and. Um, and that's what I've experienced. I've gone like to like one D, not not like twelfth dimension, but like one dimension where mm -hmm. it's like everything's just. If you've ever seen like some a graphic designer making a computer program and there's no visuals over, they're just like grids mm -hmm. of like say a mountain or something. It's kind of what I saw, and or I mean you could remote view, which is going consciously projecting like, to somewhere specific like in this um, specific plane like you want to go to China and you just like remote view over there or as what has been the most profound experience for me when I consciously projected out of my body and just went kind of straight to a source and like there was multiple levels of heaven so it was like awesome and then like really awesome, and then like holy moly, mm -hmm. and then it was like, because these are really like octaves of your own being. So once you get up to the higher levels, it's like divine masculine, divine feminine, creator, and then once you're past that, there's no duality at all. There's just pure love, pure essence, pure light. And that's where we all come from. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love I love your description because I I always explain things through the grid and I, sometimes I think that's why I can't explain the astral world is I see things on a grid and um talking I, I kinda talk to spirit in my own like astral realm, but sometimes it's hard to decipher whether that would be considered astral realm because I'm not necessarily seeing myself over my body. I'm kind of, I'm lucid about what's happening. I know I'm in a, a special place in the dimension somewhere. Um, 
But I think that's what some people are still trying to clarify is astral projecting, you're going to see yourself and you're attached to like this string because that's how a lot of people explain it. So when you said you remote view, it sounds like you can kind of just view them without having to necessarily feel like you're out of your body. Is that right? Or my? I think it would what you're thinking of, like when you project out of your body and you can see your body, that's kind of what remote viewing is. Okay. And then astrally projecting with almost some people would call just like a bad trip. <laughs> and kind of what I'm talking about is like going to like the blueprint layer of reality. Um, and you can do that through psychedelics as well. Um, where things are just like wobbly and more malleable. Um, but once you like bring in those etheric levels and know what the blueprint is, everything becomes more solidified and crystallized and more malleable but less wobbly. I know a lot of uh, hippies who experience like tripping and then like everything's really wobbly for a while. Definitely. Awesome. Well, thanks for clearing that up for me, guys. Uh, back to um, what we were talking about. Ashton, I believe, mentioned it before, and I think everyone kind of touched on it, about taking a team with you because there's some darker things. Um, did anyone want to explain some of the, the experiences they've had with these darker beings or just explain more about why it's good to take your spirit guides or whomever with you into this realm? Go ahead, Bob uh, Nanda. Well, I would say, first and foremost, um, if you end up in the astral realm, it's probably not going to be in your conscious awareness, you know, or that you would want to go there, um, you know. It'd be like, do you want to watch a horror movie or something that is expressing something that maybe makes you feel uncomfortable or not? Um, we most end up in the astral because of lack of awareness of how to manage their own consciousness. So I don't know that you would necessarily want to uh, one, cater to fear consciousness that you need a team because there's no need to be in the astral realm. Two, there's no need to be in fear of the astral realm because it can't hurt you. It can only teach you. It can only make you so uncomfortable that it makes you want to shift your consciousness to actually create a new reality and to realize that you're living in ego in the mind and not in the heart. So I would feel if you want to shift your awareness and move your consciousness to a to the inner planes of consciousness. Um, I would say first and foremost there's no need to take any fear there. Part of the old paradigm is to have a team and to feel that there's they are against us and as we clearly mentioned earlier the astral is a, a projection of our inner reality. So we're sharing the uh, because it's a collective field, the whole human consciousness is projecting into the astral plane what is taking place on the inner reality. So there's nothing really there to fear. When you have that fear, it's the fear that drives you into uh, the event that allows you to shift uh, your you know, your whole perspective, your whole reality, and your new choices. So I would say that you can take and learn from outside sources the difference between the realities. There's an astral plane and a etheric plane. There's different expressions, you know, uh, I can, you know, uh, but if you're that more aware, then you can be more conscious of it and say, well, maybe I don't have to go through what was once experienced in the old paradigm of, you know, trial and tribulation. You know, just saying, well, we're just learning to hack the system and say, we just want to go straight to to the etheric to source. Maybe we don't need this anymore. If we're collectively growing, we can say, let's just bypass the astral, and which you'll find most people end up in the astral because they need to. They need to understand discernment. They need to understand that they are living in ego so much that they can't see it in their own physical reality. They need to see it on a new reality. And, you know, and I'll share a little bit of my uh, just you know, not specific experiences, but in general. When I first ended up, uh, it was I first when I first left my body when I was more plugged into uh, projection. You know, and of course that was because I learned that was what I had to do was project and leave. After, you know, and so now I, now I see more as just shifting your awareness and you don't have to project anywhere because they're all super laced or superimposed over one another. It's kind of shifting your awareness. But let's say, so as I made it to the affair plane, then I was instantly, you know, connecting to the Synod Masters and the uh, Angelics 
and such, and they uh, instantly started taking me to the astral. I didn't even realize at first how easily uh, I was shifting to that, but I started you know, experiencing these energies that were not comfortable at all. I started experiencing realities that looked demonic, hellish, and such. And throughout all of it, um, it didn't matter how much I called for any energies to save me, I was calling from my ego, so I was only calling more of that same energy to protect me, which was just giving me more of a frightening experience. And I had to learn how to actually live in the heart. And if I was going to connect with my actual guides coming from the absolute or the etheric, that I had to call from them from my heart. And this is, was very important for me because that turned me into a uh, truly heart-based consciousness that I could literally live in my heart and not from the mind. And once I learned that, well, of course, I did go through the process of bringing guides in and supporting me, but it was just a scenario to, because I needed that process to come into that awareness that, okay, I'm calling from my mind, I'm living in my mind, and I'm living in the projection of my mind as opposed to living in my heart, living in the source consciousness field where, where it's not the human description but the actual absolute of the etheric. And then at that point, do I need this protection anymore? What is there to protect because I've moved through the awareness that I was only experiencing the reality that was coming from discord inside of my own being. And so now, what you know, part of my own divine mission and uh, my personal mission is to share this new awareness that we don't have to go through those same scenarios prior. Now, maybe it is specific to whichever of you viewing, listening to this, you may have to go to that because it's very specific to how you're currently experiencing consciousness and how you're maybe projecting it onto others and to the field. So you may have to go through that and go through the process to do that. But I'd like to just share that you don't need a team per se. You don't need to go there, you know, unless it's like going to the video store. What kind of movie do you want to pick up? Do you want to pick up Disney and uh, have a blast and see all the beautiful colors and play with the, all the different, uh, you know, fairies and... Uh, beautiful things, or do you want to go pick up, you know, the nightmare and say, I want to experience gore, uh, death, uh, dismemberment, you know, so it's it's choice, and you know, I honor them all, I just like to express that there are different opportunities now with new awareness, and that those of us who are actually going through the explorations, you know, and especially in the waking consciousness, we can then provide this new awareness where much of the old uh, teachings, which are all that's already been expressed, they come from a lower form of consciousness, and mostly from an interpretation from the mind, you know, and that's what much of, you know, what is already available to us, you know, is not serving our highest good because a lot of the direct experience is through the heart, and much of what has been expressed has been through ego, and that is what the new earth and the new paradigm is all about, letting go of even, you know, what we think anything is because that's kind of finite something, and there is no such thing except for a choice of that older reality. We're moving into the infinite where it can actually be many different things. We can give a kind of foundation or a template, but that's very expansive too. And the minute you try to define it, then you limit it and put a box back around it. So, um, you know, without going into you know really too much more detail, that's just the overall perspective that uh, myself and my guide would like to share and make aware. And, you know, in future times, like, uh, some may make more a video, some of my experiences to help others that may be going to it but don't understand it. Is this beneficial? Those who are going through whatever these realities, uh, they are a way shore and they're here to create big change, and that's often why they have to go into the astral because they don't understand what the unconscious or the subconscious mind creates and how instantly it creates. So we have to see that to make a shift in us, but once we do it, it's like, well, I don't no longer have to fall down off my bike to, to ride it anymore, so I can show others, here's how you just ride the bike. It's easy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my perspective. <laughs> well, that was awesome. I, I, I'm just taken away with how much information that your guides are able to provide us with. Um, someone in the chat mentioned, and I, I believe you already touched on this, that uh, um, I, I said that um, we could run into darker... Uh, beings, and that's just because we got ta uh, touched on, but it seems like you can really touch with angels and all positive things there, too. You don't necessarily have to run into bad things. You guys, you shouldn't be scared. Um, 
Ashton or Nick or even in Silamon, would any of you like to share some experiences you guys have had in the astral realm? Anybody you've seen or met or been? Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the first really intense experiences I had specifically was in the astral realm. Um, it's about four years ago. I um, was going through a mushroom trip with my friends. And about halfway through this trip, um, essentially my friend became possessed by one of these. And it was like all being psychically downloaded to me that it was like a negative thought form entity who was disembodied. I had no body, was living in the fourth dimensional astral realm specifically. And it took over my buddy Jimmy's body because he was vibrating so high that he was not grounded in his body so it was easy for the entity to just completely take over his brain um, his entire body my friend was completely gone the, um, he had a complete he had like a British accent all of a sudden the entity started possessing everyone else in the room and it started with like this it started this like spiritual warfare with me because it like knew that I saw it. And the lights went out, we started like spiraling through these dimensions and I was getting all these really intense downloads, but the entity kept coming at me. And it was all this just pure negativity. But in the very background of it, this entity was like yo, I'm you. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, well, it was just like the faintest thing that like, if I didn't pay attention, if I wasn't paying attention, I could have missed easily. I doubt I would have missed. As it, was, it felt all very orchestrated. But it's my understanding that these negative dark entities are part of the totality of who we are not our true selves, but an egoic projection that some part of our subconscious or just part of us wants to experience and give us that contrast. And for me, I just, it was like complete loss of fear of going into any situation, whether it be I have to astrally project into the heart of the astral realm or if I'm going to the grocery store and I want to talk to the person next to me. It's like, well, it's all within my own consciousness projection and there's nothing to fear. I really like what Baba Nanda said about not having to have protection or guides have really gotten to that lesson over the last year. It's like I can I have the power to create my entire reality. I don't I can I have the power to create stability or protection or whatever you, it is you think you're needing. I mean if you're totally in a surrendered state, that protection's just gonna be there automatic. You're not there's just gonna be open doors that you'll know to follow. Definitely. All right, so um, I wanted to touch on um, Nick and Silman's connections and experiences real quick. Um, and then after that, we were going to take a quick break because I know there's some people in the chat room that need a break for a minute, and um, if any of us do since it's uh, past the normal hour. But we want to continue this conversation, so as long as everyone can stay with us, we would love to keep it going. Um, but, yeah, if anyone has questions, feel free to send them to me on the chat, and I'm going to put Nick on the spot and ask him about some of his experiences in the astral realm. Yeah, for a period of time, um, I only experienced what one would call good dreams or good astral projections. And uh, I got that kind of comfortable in it. And these different energies have kind of carried themselves in there. And then I experienced a few what one would call psychic attacks or, or deep in the astral realms and bad dreams, um, feeling these, these bad fears. And I, I was wondering, uh, how can I have these if 
if I'm living in the heart, you know, operating from the heart, how can I be affected in this way? And it brought me to a place that Babananda and Ashton were saying is that if you're in this heart space, you don't need protection. You provide it for yourself because the heart is it is protection. So it, it allowed me to look, view the, the ego for what it was and what it was projecting. It brought me to a place of a great relief and empowerment that, you know, you can go talk to that person next to you without feeling weird. You can go make that new friend. You can try that new meditation technique. So, you know, whatever you want to do, you're so empowered to follow your, your highest joy, your, what, it, what you feel, your the most good that would be provided with that. With full conviction, full childlike innocence, and just getting that experience, that, that first-hand experience, and you, know, you don't need to be harmed or hurt. If there to be tests, you can't be harmed or hurt. It, that doesn't even exist. It's a projection of the mind. So we can go through these things and be taught by our guides, be taught by the demons, be taught by the psychic attacks and all of this stuff. And eventually, through experience, we can see it for what it truly is. And it's all just a big fun game to learn. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for sharing that with us. Um, I'm going to put Celo here on the spot in just a second, but before I do that, um, anyone still tuning in, we are still are going to do the, the Cosmic Energy Forecast after our discussion, and the card reading is to come, so please stay with us. Um, also, um, we still have the subscription uh, contest going on for the Handmade Journal, it's Project Bring Me to Life Colors for your dreams or your experiences in the astral realm. So you can sign up on the little sidebar. and. Silman, would you like to share some of your experiences with us? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I would. Um, I would like to talk on talk. Uh, excuse me. Touch on the dark entity for just a second. Um, I do agree with everybody saying that uh, you don't need protection from anything. You are a sovereign being. You are an angelic being, a sentient being, and we are all. You know, just a small fractal of the infinite that is God or Source. And so we, as individual fractals, don't have to allow anything to affect us if we don't want it to. So if there are dark energies that are trying to get to you, the only way they can get to you is if you are afraid that they will. And the more you think about it, the more you think they're going to get me, the more they will get you. Um, but there are those who I feel are still not in that place where they are ready to accept that they are their own protection. And so real quick, for those who, who aren't ready for that, um, just call on, call on God. Say, please God, please make these go away. Please God, please make these go away. Um, just, you know, saying something like that will help, or calling, one, one guy said uh, he was being abducted and he called on Jesus and they all went away, but um, you will have to get to a place where you will be your own protection, and, and it will be a much, much, much more enjoyable experience for you to, to do that. Um, also, you can pretend... Like, uh, you can pretend like you're Harry Potter and do the Expecto Patronum charm. And I guarantee you, if nothing else works, that would guarantee work. Um, <laughs> um, just real quick, the, the S rejection experience. Um, as a, as a, as a Bhavanana was talking about how the etheric is, is a much more heartfelt place to go, um, at first I thought this was an astral projection, and it might be, but... I'm uh, really starting to reevaluate uh, what is etheric and astro now. And I'm very happy that Bhavananda Nanda is here. He's provided a lot, so thank you. Um, my experience was I was in Hawaii, and I was living under, under this bridge for, for three days, and I was, I was with uh, Archangel Raphael um, 
basically he was uh, basically he was guiding me and teaching me all these lessons. Um, most most on faith and having faith. Uh, so having faith in yourself. But I ended up traveling out of my body and waking up on a. It was a beat a beach similar to the one on Hawaii. However, we are we were surrounded by these giant aloe vera looking uh, plants. Um, there's 13 individuals standing in a circle. We all had dark robes covering our faces. And in the middle of our circle was this hologram, this big, giant hologram of Earth. And, in, and it was turning. And it, you could see the grid on the hologram and everything. As it was turning, you see just these red uh, sort of ripples in very specific areas of the Earth. And uh, just remember that we were there to talk about these specific areas and what to do for them. But I can't remember. It's been about two, three years now, so I can't really exactly remember what was happening in those areas. But uh, that was my astral projection experience. And thank you for allowing me to share that. Um, awesome. Well, I'm glad that we, we all got to hear everyone experiences. Sorry for the echo. Um, so I think we're going to take a quick break because I, I feel like the, the chat room is calling for it and some of our panel may, may need a quick break. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody in the panel so if you guys do need to disappear for a second. When we come back we'll unmute and everybody will be heard. Alright. Um, if everybody could unmute themselves up in the, the top where the microphone is probably red. That way we know who all is back with us. Can everybody hear me? Can anybody hear me? Ashton, you're still muted. I saw your mouth move. <laughs> Blam. There you go. <laughs> Blammo. <laughs> awesome. Do we have Nick back? There you go. And Babananda, there is a little microphone at the top. If you can reclick it, it will unmute you. There we go. We got everybody back. And welcome back, guests. Thank you for staying with us. We hope everyone enjoyed their break. And I'm going to give it over to Sealman real quick, who wants to give a shout-out. Yeah, I just wanted to say to those who are listening on Spreaker, uh, because after we do these podcasts, we add them to Spreaker so people can download the MP3. But if you are on Spreaker and you're listening to this, um, you would not, you are not going to hear uh, the cosmic energy forecast um, at the end. So you need to go to cosmic energy forecasts. Yes. Blogspot.com. Awesome. Yay! We did it. <laughs> Hopefully they can see you, because for some reason on my feed, you're not showing. But let's see here. Um, let's go ahead and get back into our astral astral world plane discussion. And um, we, we just talked about experiences and everyone's experiences on with astral projection. Um, does anyone want to possibly share any of their um, scientific research or background or um, how they may feel that it's scientifically relevant to to us? Any of the, the details? Go for it, Baba Nanda. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my guides would like to share a just a way to understand the distinction between uh, the astral plane and the etheric plane. Um, and the etheric plane is basically source consciousness in itself. It is the whole creator field. Um, the astral plane is being created from the human consciousness. So the human consciousness that exists within already the etheric, and what in separation consciousness it is, it is building more fields, and that is where the astral field is being created, is out of separation consciousness. Unity consciousness is the etheric planes, where, as Ashton said, the divine blueprint exists. The other is a miscreation, is what I've called that, because it's being created uh, from a place of the mind, is instead of using the divine blueprint where all the source codes are. So to better make the distinction between the two, 
uh, as part of duality. It doesn't have to have a dimensional, you know, definition by any means. Separation consciousness exists on uh, any dimension. It doesn't have to be just in the fourth, third. It can exist at any dimension. And that's where many other entities have came in to play with us on astral. But it's just a, it's just a choice, like a great play. As Nick mentioned, it's a game, you know what I mean, that we choose as uh, creator beings, you know, cops and robbers or cowboys and Indians, you know, for, uh, for that perspective. But to better understand it is literally the astral projection is something that is just being created from the human consciousness, which is basically limitation and separation. And the etheric is just basically the absolute, the, the full source God creator consciousness that's always there. And to... To change, you know, the perspective that you don't have to project anywhere to go to these places. You just have to release yourself that you are separate, or that you are going to allow that level of program, and especially fear consciousness. All those are what keep you from connecting to your own creator source, I am, you know, presence, which is where the etheric planes exist, you know, and that is what basically our objective is, if you will, on this game, is to move back into the heart base. In the heart, there's no disconnection. It's already connected. We're all right there. The etheric is right there. And so the astral is just basically showing us, hey, this will dissolve when we release ourselves from you know, separation of consciousness. So that was just one thing they really wanted me to share uh, for anyone that wants to entertain a new perspective in a way to really make the distinction between the two. And if we want to quantify it, that would be a perhaps that maybe everybody could better relate to and, and understand with their little you know, basic logic. So uh, that's what I'd like that's to share. So thank you. That was, that was good. Um, so we do have a couple questions from the audience. Um, I'm going to go ahead and touch on those since we um, have been running a little bit over. I think the first one I got was from Re. Let me see if I can get it here. She asks... Is it possible to go to the astral realm and, hold on, it went away on me, when listening to deep healing music and closing one's eyes, I, uh, sorry, it kept disappearing, because I've been at a recent show where it was a huge healing experience for me, and when I opened my eyes, I forgot where I was. I just got so into dance and music. Is that what happens, or where that happens? Hmm. So I think she's asking, is it possible to kind of go into a trance when you're listening to music? Um, yes. And is that considered astral projecting? I say it is very possible, very probable. Would you like to elaborate? <laughs> uh, yes, I would like to say that um, sort of, you know what it feels like to go into a daydream. Um, there could be a point where you actually do your your consciousness or your awareness completely leaves your body um, and I think listening to music especially helps the process because it allows your body to completely relax it allows you to sort of get your mind out of where it's been uh, that week or that day etc and so when you when you do leave your body your body has to be completely relaxed and, and basically like in sleep mode so um, listening to music not only makes it possible, it makes it much more probable that it would happen. Awesome. Um, does anyone else want to touch on that? Uh, Ashton, I know you use your music yeah. to kind of do something similar to that, so let's see what you have to say. Yeah, in, in certain ways I like to think of um, the music I play as almost sh shamanic. Even, not all of it's super shamanic sounding, like native sounding, but First, on a scientific level, when your brain is listening to music, your brain notices the gaps in between the spaces of the notes, and those gaps allow your neurons to all synchronize and totally balance into a state of, like, literally synchronization where they're all um, connecting and communicating with each other in, like, literal harmonic way where the if you think of it in terms of geometry, the geometry would be like, you know, like you don't really see much perfect things in reality except for geometry. So the 
the pattern that your brain takes is like a perfect type of neurological pathway for your consciousness to flow through. So I, I think of these higher realities as like they're like right here. Um, so when you go to a show and you're like going off into other realms, yeah, you're totally going off into what well, some would call astral projection. I wouldn't define it as that as more of like a total just expansion of consciousness where you're tapping into higher dimensions and realities. I, I've experienced it myself where I just close my eyes and I'll see like light temples and light cities and just light beings. Like the whole reality is just starts to like expand. Um, but I think it's very important to realize that those things are right here in this space, in this now space, and there's no separation from where you are looking at now and, like, that reality. Um, but just to give a simple answer, like, totally yes. <laughs> <laughs> totally yes. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. So... <laughs> Anyone else want to answer Reese's question? I think they, they answered it pretty awesome, but we would love to hear anyone else's point of view. Uh, the actual question was um, pretty much, do you think going into a trance when music is a part of the experience, is that still astral projection? Everyone else good? I would like to share just a couple different perspectives. Is absolutely, the music can take you to many different levels of consciousness. One, if the music was produced in a manner where there was no intention of it to, to shift the conscious, other than it was just created for musical expression, then often that generally leads a person into the etheric because uh, generally most people create music from the heart. Um, now, there's people that actually uh, use intention to create music to take them to an altered state of consciousness. Now, those who are still working mostly from the ego and haven't learned the difference between the two maybe offering you a direct portal into the astral and those that would be working from the heart and intent and creating it with intention would be leading an experience into the etheric so yes music can induce a altered state of consciousness into either the astral plane or the uh, etheric plane and therefore it makes a difference you know to those and these are what you'll see the new age music pioneers that they'll actually be using consciousness to to take you into that reality also you know like as much of what Ashton was explaining the different frequencies the way it's presented expressed and the, the tonality and also the, the Hertz frequencies and such so and then those that are actually using the etheric key codes can take someone into a, a beautiful place where you're there with the angelics and everything but those that are pulling the key codes from the astral they're going to take you to a place that maybe doesn't feel so good and, you know, but it's all purpose not to judge at all, but to definitely say it is very much possible. And that is something where I see us all moving into the new earth is we're actively with intention. We want to continue creating a paradisimal reality, paradise, truly. So therefore, we're going to put our heart into it and say, this is the reality we choose. And now I'm going to express it through my music. And then I'm only going to express it. I'm going to leave it with the notation that this will help you to go into deep meditation when you listen to this. And I've aligned myself to the heart, and this will also make it a little bit easier for you to tune into that reality so that it comes, when you do that, you then become an instrument yourself. So regardless of you playing an instrument or using whatever medium to create the music, you're also an instrument for the divine will. And then the divine will is going to say, we want to connect you to the etheric uh, planes and the etheric realm. So just being more, using more intention and awareness is what will change those experiences. So that's what I would like to share. So true. Definitely. Actually, Baba Nanda, we got a question specifically directed towards you in something you mentioned earlier, but anyone's welcome to uh, add to it. I'm not sure why we're echoing. Um, sorry for that. Um, but I think it's your, your, your sound. Go ahead and read your sound. Just put that down. Um, so the, the question directed to Baba Nanda is, when you were talking about the astral realm is created as a collective, if we eliminate duality consciousness, does the astral realm then vanish? And that's from Sam. From what my guides have presented to me and using my own logic, 
I would say yes, that is what will happen. Uh, but because it hasn't happened, I can't say for certain. I can only express that I believe it in my heart, and I trust in my guides that yes, that will vanish, and uh, we will be more whole again. Awesome. Does anyone else want to add on to that? Do you guys think that it's possible for a realm to vanish? I would say there's an infinite amount of parallel co-intersecting realities. So everything's always going to be that anything in creation that was an aspect of creation is eternally there, but you don't have to experience it for yourself. You're constantly switching realities. So as a creator being, you can just kind of look and choose through contrasting realities. Um, what it is you prefer, and as divine source being, generally you prefer unconditional joy, bliss, happiness. I mean, that's what everyone says. What's the natural state of who we are? So it's not going to disappear, but it can disappear for you. For you, never have to experience it again. Well, and but at the same time, I just feel like I got this download. It's like. One part of the, one big part of the ascension process that Earth is going through right now, even more than just like humanity's ascension, it's as if all of these realities are unifying. So, in a sense, yeah, like we could say, like transmute out an aspect of reality to a more loving, harmonious state. That would be my answer. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we're going to we'll start to round up on this round table. But Nick Moniki, I want to start with you on closing statements because you haven't got to talk a lot. And I'm sure you have a lot to say. Actually, not really. Every, I mean, at you, Silo, <laughs> Babananda, just like I feel no need to speak because. Everything that you guys have been saying, it's just, it's so concise, it's so, so easy for everyone else to understand, and I'm sure all of us have, have some, ex some type of experiences that have led us to some type of question that has been asked or answered or spoken about, and with all of these great beings that we are sharing this great podcast with right now with with their experiences with their guides with their open hearts they've been able to be able to articulate these things where any age person any level of consciousness person can derive their own meaning from it and benefit uh, some people may be like oh that's crazy oh that's amazing but in some amount of time, that person is going to look back or hear this or integrate it right away. That wow, okay, that can that's really helpful. You know, there, we don't need to be stuck in, in duality. We don't need to be stuck in fear. And once we are living in our own power, then the game, be, the true game, begins right then. I think. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I'm glad that you were able to share your closing statements. Look how happy he looks. He looks so happy. I know. We just wanted to hear your, your pretty voice. We haven't heard much of it this podcast. We'll get to your segment here in a few minutes. I talk way too much in the other podcast. So I, I <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, we're going to continue and do some, like I said, the closing statements. Stay tuned. We are going to do our um, cosmic energy forecast and card readings and segments with Nick. And if Ashton has anything to share, too, we, he, yeah, he used to have segments, so we'd love to hear what he has to say. Um, before we get to that, let's see. Babananda, do you want to give any closing statements or remarks or anything like that? Add anything to your already beautiful description of the astral plane? I would. I would. Go for it. Um, much of what we're sharing and what we're discussing is, you know, I think it comes down to the best way to make up your own uh, truth about all this is through your own experience and your own exploration of consciousness. And I think that is what we came here to do, regardless of any specific agenda. We came here to explore consciousness in new ways 
uh, you know, and whether that we came here to be in limitation, also to find our way into a different reality. And you know, I would invite and encourage everybody to explore yourself, explore the different realities. Don't have any attachments to what you're supposed to expect or what you think you're going to expect, but to simply just explore and without any fear. Whatever comes into your awareness is there, you know, for one, to help you understand reality and to give you uh, the tools and the resources needed so that you can truly be a creator being that is aligned through the heart. So, therefore, you can create this amazing reality and then align with others who are also wishing to do that. You know, so what I learned in this, you know, I, I chose to use uh, meditation as one of my main mediums to have a lot of these experiences. Why, why I was excited to join this panel about the astral and even bringing the awareness of the etheric is because I, you know, I spent many hours daily going into meditation to follow this exploration because there was a time in my life where I used many entheogens or psychedelics to, to induce that, but they were only temporal and uncontrolled and once I got into really meditating and meditating a minimum an hour a day and I reached six months about doing three to eight hours a day is where I got to get this clear and concise information of the difference between the etheric to the astral and why I now have a deep connection with my guides and this inner plane of consciousness and it now allows me to bring that into the physical and it's been exploration, and that was the resource and the medium that I use. And, I, and that's you know what I'd like to share every one of you to don't be focused on what I'm sharing or anyone else's sharing, other than to use it as oh cool I, that gives me something to think about, and then you know empty your cup again, and then say well I'm going to go explore it and see what it wants to show me, and then I'm going to use what excites my own joy and makes me want to you know use whatever resources that you've already laid out in your own current life and to follow that and that what I see is the true joy of being alive and creating is to explore experience and expand so that would be my closing statement for all of you beautiful souls who are here at the round table and also who are tuning in and viewing this and to have fun with it and uh, just, uh, yeah, be the love that you are. Thank you. I love you. I am you. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Um, <laughs> but Nick, go ahead. Is to use the medium of tarot cards. And as Babananda was giving us that gracious message, um, our friend St. Germain <laughs> threw to say, work your magic. So <laughs> Said, it's it's not about Babananda. It's not about Shannon, Silo, Ashton, myself. Right. It's about you, whoever you are. It's 3D. Here and say, hey, what's up? What excites me? What do I want to do? And do that. That's awesome. Um, Babananda, I want to personally thank you. I'm sure everyone on the panel wants to thank you. And the people in the chat, they want to thank you because um, you came to the panel with so much awesome knowledge and they're already asking if we can have you back on another episode, so <laughs> you obviously did very well explaining yourself. <laughs> they are excited that you've become part of the Project Bring Me to Life family. So, I'm honored. Thank you. <laughs> we would love to have you back. I would um, love to come back. For sure. We'll definitely let you know, and hopefully you'll tune in and keep coming back to a, let us know what you think. Um, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Silman. Do you mind giving some closing statements on astral projection? Uh, Astro <laughs> projection ending statements. Yes. Um, Put you on the spot. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> hey, um, I I really enjoyed this this panel discussion. Uh, I really didn't know what to expect. I knew what I had and what my experiences were to share, but to hear everybody else's uh, experiences and and perceptions or whatever you want to call them. It's very amazing and it's a lot of fun. I love it so much. So I thank everybody for, for co-creating such a wonderful roundtable. It's been truly amazing. Uh, any last last statements that I have specifically for Astro Projection are that, uh, uh, like Babananda said, you have to live your own experiences. Um, so if you are truly curious about this and want to find out as much as you can, 
Um, you know, if you feel like you're meant to do it, then you should do it, and hopefully we provided you with uh, the right tools to have the best experience that you can for that. And I'm excited to learn more about the ethereal realm, ethereal plane, so uh, hopefully that'll be a future record. Yeah, maybe we can have that round table and Bob and Nanda will be back with explanations. Okay. We love it. And Ashton, I didn't forget you. What are your closing statements for the discussion before we move on to Cosmic Energy Forecast? Okay. Um, first, yeah, I want to thank everyone individually for being a super badass superhero conscious light being of awesome. Because uh -huh. you're all so... Uh, I'm so blessed to know all of you. Uh -huh. Seriously. Um... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> As a closing, I, I feel like, all right, I've got this thing in my head that is saying, first of all, think about, you know, the visual light spectrum and how each color is separated by a certain bandwidth of vibration. So, like, red turns into orange, and there's that, like, dimensional crossing right at red and orange, right? So on Earth, there's, let's say, there's these, let's say there are these, there's these 12 dimensions, and most people think of Earth as a third dimensional place, which is true, it's all the dimensions, but right now we're very much vibrating in 3D. Um, and as we move, let's say that all the even dimensions, Two, four, six, eight, ten are all non-physical dimensions, and all the odd numbers one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven are all physical dimensions. So we're going from three to five. And one of the reasons we're experiencing a lot of these negative astrolome beings is because we're just kind of going through the fourth dimension. We're going right directly through it vibrationally. So they're all kind of like looking in on our dimension like, oh my god, did you see that? Like, what was that? Was that a human? And we're doing the same here. Like, what was that? Was that like a demon? Or what was that? Or anything. So now that you know that, think of yourself as a light and these entities have been in the dark, like the unconscious, subconscious, unmanifested realms, where once they see this light, they're going to flock to you. They're going to see your presence, and they're going to want to literally shoot through your body to get back to source because they've been disconnected from their own soul for you know, who knows how long, and you are an embodied soul, so it's a direct chance for them to free themselves from their own separation from source. So for me, that just kind of lightens the load. Like, it's not like there's really a lot of psychic attacks. I mean, there really seems to be, and there is, but on a certain level, it's them wanting to feel that love heart base connection that you hold so strongly, and that's why they're flocking towards us, it's especially the star seeds and the light workers and all of that, because you're bringing that higher dimensional reality back to them. You're bringing that connection and resonance back to their, to their being, and I've experienced multiple times where just like negative entities in my face and I just shine love and like no fear and presence and they disappear, they start smiling, they completely shift. And it's really, it's me, me completely shifting. Um, I had this dream where it was like one of the most vivid, intense, very almost lucid dreams I ever had. It, I was staying at the night at my friend's house and there was a storm going on and I'd just seen this zombie movie, which I didn't really want to see because I feel like when you watch movies, you like tap into that reality and tend to get created. So I, of course, had this such an intense, vivid zombie apocalypse dream where I'm like having to like 
jump off planes at the last second and like barely survive multiple scenarios. And our group of friends, they got cornered into this factory where there's thousands upon thousands of zombies just sprinting at us. And I wasn't lucid dreaming or anything. It was just like I saw my felt myself doing this. This zombie was sprinting at me, and I just was like holding no fear, just kind of like, oh, I love you. Like, it's okay. And the zombie, like, totally looked at me, and it was like its eyes went from, like, all crazy to, like, super confused, and it just, like, stopped. And then I woke up, and I just woke up with this feeling of... It was this metaphor for really how the world is. When you see someone and they're, like, a mindless zombie... You don't have to judge them as a zombie. You shine your light of presence and consciousness onto them, and they feel their own presence from within. And that might be the first time they ever experience that. And it happens to be through you, just being that divine mirror and reflection. And I think that's something that we can really hold on to as if we experience psychic attacks and negative entities. That's so true, Ashton, and I love that you use the term shine on them. <laughs> shine time. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, that was an awesome um, closing statement from everybody. 